Hello there lads and lassies, welcome to Scottish Geeks, my name is Derek and today we are going to be talking about Army of Darkness or, as it's called in the film, Bruce Campbell vs the Evil Dead for some odd and bizarre reason. And I'd just like to thank Doublepluga79 for suggesting this movie to me and if you guys want to suggest a movie for me to check out, please do so in the comments section below. Don't suggest loads and loads, just suggest one you really want me to see me review. Um, these reviews will be changing as um, more are done, etc. Because I'm not entirely sure what my limitations are, but I'm having a chat with someone at the moment who's going to help me out with that. So I'm going to be able to find out if I can use images or scenes from movies and things without getting into too much trouble. Anyway, on with the review. Okay, so basically the first time I ever saw Army of Darkness was when I was a teenager, and it was actually the first of uh, the Raimi trilogy that I'd actually seen. I hadn't seen The Evil Dead or The Evil Dead 2 Dead by Dawn. Um, so Army of Darkness was literally the first of the Evil Dead movies I'd ever seen. And when I first saw it, I thought it was hilarious. It was amazingly fun and cool. And But that's not what we're going to be talking about today. We're going to be talking about what I've seen recently and my newest reactions to it. So basically... After having seen the likes of um, Ash vs. Evil Dead TV show and watched a lot more of Sam Raimi's movies and a lot more of Bruce Campbell's movies, I can honestly say uh, in this day and age, if I'd watched it third instead of first, I probably wouldn't have enjoyed it quite as much because it didn't really keep in with the actual aesthetics of the actual storyline. Yes, it was kind of a... You know, it was kind of a follow-on from The Evil Dead 2, but in the same respect as The Evil Dead 2 wasn't really a follow-on from The Evil Dead 1, but more of a remake, this just seemed to me to be pandering to the studios. However, that's not to say it's not a good movie. The film in itself is actually pretty damn well done. It has a lot of amazing um, storylines, plot twists, effects, etc. It's basically what you would call something like comedy horror and comedy horror was a big thing in the 80s but when this film came out in the mid 90s comedy horror wasn't really a huge thing so possibly that is why it didn't quite do as well as maybe some of the other films that were coming out right about that time because mostly it was slasher fix etc but in saying that army of darkness still has a special place right here guys right here in my left lung it really does <laughs> yeah anyway so basic premise of the movie is Ash has gone back in time. Ash had defeated the massive evil um, of the second movie, or had he, you know, this is Ash, he likes to say stuff, and travels back in time to medieval times. Yes, not the restaurant, no, actual medieval times where he, for some reason, meets up with a bunch of English people. So instead of just traveling through time, he also appeared to have traveled through space as well, unless, of course, for some reason, the entire tree of history had completely been rewritten. But it's a film, we're not going to, you know, we're not going to dwell on things like that. Hey, alternate dimension. Okay, we'll call it an alternate dimension. So anyway, so Ash falls down and um, it has changed. Basically from the Evil Dead 2, where he shoots a dead eye and they all shout, Hail, hail, hail. No, 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 he just falls down this time. He gets captured and for some reason suddenly enslaved while they try to kill his car. Nobody questioning his strange clothes, mannerisms, or the fact he is just fallen from the sky. No, no, he must be part of Henry the Red, um, his, his, uh, his crew. So anyway, so they take him back to the castle, still utterly confused about what the hell is going on, uh, narrating, and um, they basically chuck him into this thing called the Pit. Now, the Pit has a couple of uh, captured deadites in it, and um, we go to our first, basically, most funny action sequence of the entire film, where a couple of deadites try to kill Ash. Ash has to punch the hell out of them, but instead the deadites end up punching the hell out of him until the wizard appears and gives him his chainsaw arm back, basically his sword in that day and age. So there we go, there's Ash cutting up stuff and eventually gets out, and all of a sudden he has the respect of the entire kingdom. Nobody thinks, yeah, this guy just killed a couple of deadites. He's either going to be someone very good or he's going to be very, very angry. You know, that we tried to kill him. Let's let's maybe shoot him full of arrows. No, no, no. That's not how it works. Because he's got a boomstick. He's magic. According to the simpler medieval times folk. So on we go. We move on. He starts to 
get all this information from the wise men and makes friends with people and becomes very, very friendly with a princess. Do you know, I don't actually know what she's a princess of, you know, or if she's maybe just, I don't know, like a, a villager who just happens to have nicer clothes than anyone. It's never really explained. But anyway, so um, they've come up with a plan to get him to go and destroy the evil uh, the wise man gives him the magical words, which gives us a first pop culture reference in the entire thing of uh, Klaatu Barata, or is it Klaatu Barata? I can never remember. Nikto, which is basically the words from the day the earth stood still. Of course, Ash being Ash goes, takes the book across and starts the first of the many, many memes about Bruce Campbell's chin. Uh, because one of the books sucks his chin into it. He recites the words, basically, maybe he doesn't say every single tiny little syllable and releases the army of darkness into the world. The army of darkness, oh, before that happened, sorry, I completely forgot about this. Or was it after? I can't remember, I think it was before. Ash gets hit by the evil, instead of turning into evil Ash, he starts to grow another Ash out of his arm. Um, well, his shoulder and this other Ash and him have a fight, etc. Um, there was an awesome line that actually happened during that where um, evil Ash it's different, the weird thing is it's different depending on which country you watch it in I've, the one I watched today there was an awesome line in it, the one I watched many years ago the line wasn't there um, the line was um, oh fuck what was it basically evil Ash um, did this little dance saying, you're good little two shoes, you're little goody two shoes little goody two shoes, started punching him and stuff and then eventually Ash got really annoyed with it held the shotgun under the guy's nose and says good Bad. I'm the guy with the gun. Bang. There we go. End of Evil Ash for the moment. Um, in the UK, it was just, uh, I eat that good. I don't understand why they changed it, but they did. Anyway, so, after that, he releases the Army of Darkness, and Evil Ash somehow re re reconstitutes himself, resurrects, comes back, and becomes Uber Evil Ash. And so Ash heads back to the, the little castle town type thing and explains what's happened uh wants to go home he says i did what you told me to do maybe I didn't say every single little syllable he says you know Klaatu <laughs> yeah um so basically that happens and of course the army of darkness has came they, they capture people they take the princess and um turn her into basically a dead eye witch for some reason who is now evil ash's main girlfriend and um all hell breaks loose um, with some pretty amazing Harryhausen style effects. It's really, really quite cool how it works. It's, it doesn't stand the test of time, but neither do Ray Harryhausen movies, and people still watch them. And I mean, it's fun watching skeletons run around and getting hit, especially they're completely random Scottish skeletons playing the bagpipes for no apparent reason. And then there's a singular German deadite um, who gets really scared and runs off saying let's get the hell out of here uh but of course this is all amounting to ash teaching these um simple folks how to fight 20th century style you know with uh, martial arts and well one move basically uh gunpowder gunpowder yes we invent gunpowder apparently and um you know because he's got books on chemistry and stuff in the back of his car which tells you how to invent bombs <laughs> how the hell did that even happen and of course they turn the car into an armored thing and they give ash a brand new hand which if you've seen the ash versus the evil dead uh, tv show you'll see is basically what he uses more than anything else um so he's got a, a robotic hand and of course we get the groovy i love that love when he says groovy it's so awesome um and they basically decimate the army of darkness while a lot of them get killed as well and um, Evil Ash comes in and he and Ash start having this epic sort of sword fight and eventually Evil Ash has all his flesh burned off, uh, turning into skeletal uber, uber Evil Ash. And I think, again, the effects are pretty damn cool for that. And uh, basically, spoiler alert, not that the whole thing hasn't been a gigantic spoiler alert. Um, Evil Ash is catapulted off. He gets blown up by this makeshift sack bomb thing. And for some reason, that is the end of it. That is how they defeat the Army of Darkness, is by defeating Ash's evil side. So, I'll get to that in a minute. I'll get to that in a minute. 
So basically, this is where things get really confusing. Depending on what country you're in is dependent on what ending you see. I've seen both endings now. And I like one, which I would consider canon. And the other one was kind of like a oh, typical Ash. So basically, the, everything's cleared up. Everything's happy again. The wise men give Ash a drink that they created from the Necronomicon, which technically they should not have done. They should have buried the bloody thing. And um, he's supposed to take a certain amount of drops to help him sleep for however long he needs to. Now, the ending I saw first was the apocalyptic ending, which was way back when, when it first came out in video. Yes, video. No DVDs, no Blu-rays, no laser discs. Videotape. And Ash takes one drop too many. And you can tell he takes one drop too many. So when he wakes up, he comes out and basically time is ruptured. The world is in hell, and he screams out that he slept too long, and that's it. Sort of a sort of a Planet of the Apes style ending kind of thing going on there. Now the ending that I saw the other day, uh, which is uh, more recent, was what I would consider a canon one. I've seen it before, but this is talking about what I've seen on the the full thing. Uh, is when he takes the correct amount of drops, possibly. I think he still takes the wrong amount. Um, the epic music plays and all of a sudden he's back working in his, uh, his shop, his store, for some reason. But he's still got the mechanical hand and stuff and he's telling this girl the story about how he saved the world, etc. And, you know, it's like, everyone's kind of like, yeah, right, Ash, whatever. Until eventually a deadite appears and then we get a whole new action sequence which cuts off, you know, a typical sort of cut-off scene. Uh, saying that there may be a new movie coming out, but there never ever was. But the TV show came out, which is just as... I love the TV show. The TV show's awesome. So, that's the other ending that happened. Now, what did I think of the movie as a whole? Um, first time I saw it, I thought it was epic. I thought it was epic. It was hilarious. It was funny. It was something that a teenager could watch uh, without having seen the original couple of movies because everything's explained at the beginning and it makes you want to see the first couple of movies. As an adult, I still loved it. I still do. I still think it's such an amazing movie. I think it is one of those movies that has to be seen. And if you've ever watched any of the Evil Dead, or even if you've watched, you know, Ash vs. the Evil Dead, the TV show, or played any of the video games, or read any of the comic books, or anything like that, or you're just a fan of Bruce Campbell in general for watching him in Xena Warrior Princess, or Sam Raimi for his Spider-Man trilogies, or, or horror movies, then I would suggest you certainly go out and you get yourself a, a copy and DVD of um, Army of Darkness or Blu-ray if you fancy. I don't know if it's out in Blu-ray yet. And you go and watch it and you just don't think about it too much. Don't think about That's the problem with people watching movies. They think about them too much. Don't think about it too much. Enjoy it for what it is. It's a silly, funny, slapstick horror movie gem. Okay? It's something that has to be seen to be believed. And once you've watched it, you you might not ever want to watch it again, but at least then you can say to folk, I have seen this movie. I've seen this movie. I liked it or I didn't like it. That's the that's the beauty of watching things. You gotta watch them first. Some movies just don't bear to be watched fully. I'll get into that another day. Um but yes, no, Army of Darkness is a welcome addition to the Sam Raimi trilogy. Uh, the Evil Dead trilogy, sorry, and it's just a wonderful, wonderful movie that I enjoyed, and that's all there is to it. I would like to say thank you again to Double Plugger um, for um, suggesting this movie, and this is the first movie. Again, if you want to suggest a movie yourself, please put your comments below. Also, something I want to start doing, which uh, people didn't take notice of in my last video, is if you get the Stardust app and you put your reviews in, and you tag me in it, at Scottish Geeks, uh, in your review, if you share it on Twitter or Facebook or whatever, I will probably be able to put them into the video next time, so that I can give your guys own reaction. As it stands, there's only two reactions for Army of Darkness, soon to be three, after I've finished making this video, and uh, I think it deserves more. I think it deserves more love. I really do. And then back to the thing I was going to talk about very, very quickly was... Why did Ash defeating Evil Ash save the world? Is Ash secretly the source of the Deadites? Think about that one. Think about that one while you head off and listen to my end music.
Anyway, guys, thank you so much for watching. Thank you again to Double Plugger Seventy Nine. Go check him out on YouTube. Go check him out anywhere he has his social media. I don't know where your social media is, man, but he'll probably have it on his YouTube page. Um, so go check that out, and I go. I'll, I'll catch you later. I'm off to record my Stardust app review, and I'm off to start maybe doing a, a live stream. So I'll catch you guys next time. But until then, bye bye.